In 2015, the migrant crisis in Europe brought unprecedented social strife and the meteoric rise of the far right all across the continent. The crisis itself had two main theatres, the Mediterranean Sea and the Balkan Peninsula. And the vast majority of migrants came through the Balkans, shown by this Frontex chart, thus making their way to Western European countries such as Germany or Sweden. Enter Viktor Orban, the far-right white nationalist Prime Minister of Hungary, directly standing between the Balkans and Western Europe. Now, in far-right circles and in Hungarian government propaganda, it's a popular talking point that Hungary and Orban in general protected Europe from the migrants in 2015, thus helping to keep Europe white and or to foil the Jewish cabal's plans, depending on how far gone you are. And here we have a tweet from Zoltán Kovács, the Hungarian government's spokesman, echoing this very sentiment. No, PM Orban did not let illegal immigrants into Europe. In fact, Hungary was one of the few EU member states that stood up against illegal migration. But was it now? Unfortunately for Zoltán Kovács, in 2015 I was living in Hungary and commuting daily on the very route the migrants were taking to Western Europe. And, being interested in the crisis, I was also reading all the articles I could get my hands on regarding the migrant crisis and the events inside the country. So based on my first-hand knowledge of events, I can confidently say that the Hungarian spokesman is lying to you right now. And so my claim is that the Hungarian government has deliberately and actively exacerbated the problem. They made the crisis much worse on purpose. Alright, so this is a rather bold claim. I fully realize that. And as we know, uh, extraordinary claims do require extraordinary evidence. So what we're going to do here is we are going to go through the events chronologically and see whether my claims hold any water. So our story begins on the 2nd of February 2015, in the morning, at the train station of Győr, a city in northwest Hungary not far from the Austrian border. Now at this point the migrant crisis has been going on for more than a year, with the number of asylum claims in the European Union increasing by 44% and in southern Europe by 95%. And these numbers are according to the UNHCR Asylum Trends 2014 statistics. Right, so why did I choose the 2nd of February 2015 as my starting point? Well, uh, stay tuned people. On that day, at the Jur train station, about 200 Kosovian migrants were removed from the rail jet heading towards uh, Germany and eventually taken away to asylum custody. Now, as a side note, Kosovians themselves are European. Uh, Kosovo is a European country, it's in the middle of the Balkans. And Kosovians themselves are considered white. So what's the problem here? Well, you see, Kosovo also happens to be 95.6% Muslim, uh, according to 2011 stats anyway from Encyclopedia Britannica. So from Orban's perspective, it actually makes perfect sense that he held them up. Or did he? You see, the local publication that reported on the events also went around and interviewed some locals about the situation. And they had some rather interesting things to say. And so they write, One passenger waiting at the station noted to our colleague with a sour smile that on yesterday's 3 o'clock railjet from Budapest Keleti there were even more foreigners, none of whom were checked however. According to him, there were so many of them on the train that there was barely any space left to stand. So what on earth has gotten into the Hungarian authorities? Because as far as I know, this was the first major action taken against migrants where they actually stopped them from traveling to Western Europe. Well, you see, on the 2nd of February 2015, German Chancellor Angela Merkel was visiting Hungary. Right. But see, at this point, in the first half of 2015, uh, Fidesz, Viktor Orban's party, had a relevant problem. Namely, that they were dropping in polls pretty severely losing about 13% uh, due to corruption scandals, inefficient governance, etc. So they started using the migrant crisis as a political tool to regain supporters. And this approach makes sense really, you know, being at the forefront of solving this big crisis that's hitting the country. And so they started rolling out the first measures to counteract the migrant crisis four months later, on the 6th of June 2015, which was a billboard campaign. And so they plastered three kinds of billboards all over the country. From Budapest, the capital, all the way to the smallest of villages. And these were, if you come to Hungary, you cannot take Hungarians' jobs. If you come to Hungary, you have to respect our culture. And the third one, if you come to Hungary, you have to respect our laws. Yeah, but quick thinking viewers might notice a problem with these billboards. Namely, that they are written in Hungarian. You know, if you want to communicate something to uh, mostly Middle Eastern migrants, it would make sense to write these billboards in Arabic, or at least in English. But of course these billboards were not intended for the migrants themselves, despite being aimed at them. 
these billboards were a giant virtue signal to Fidesz's old, mostly rural, conservative supporters. And keep in mind that as this is going on, people are marching through the country non-stop. From Turkey, across the Balkans, through Hungary, to Western Europe. And although there are some attempts to hold them up or hinder them, this is only enough to have a bunch of people uh, collect around the Kelati railway station, the station from which the international trains go to Western Europe, and just hang out there waiting for a chance to escape Hungary. And then came the idea for which I find Orban is praised the most in far-right circles. The wall. Or rather, uh, wire fence. And as the Hungarian government proudly announced, on the 29th of August 2015, the fence was finally done on the Serbian border. Here it is on the map, marked with red. Now, do we see the problem here? But as the government was proudly presenting the professional and very effective chicken fence, including a freight car from Mad Max, the proverbial dark clouds gathered over Budapest. You see, the authorities were instructed to pull all migrants off trains, no exceptions. You know, this is the thing that they said they did from the beginning, but only started now. Which in practice meant that if you got into the country through the wire fence, which was not difficult, you actually had trouble moving on from Hungary. See, once you were in the country, you could get on a train to Western Europe if you had a valid ticket. But then if you met a police patrol on the train, they pulled you off if you had no passport. And so, basic arithmetics. What happens if the number of incoming people is higher than the number of outgoing people? They start building up. And that's exactly what happened, turning the underpass system around Kalati into a makeshift refugee camp over the course of a few months by the end of August 2015. So instead of a couple hundred people, now you had multiple thousands, all hanging around the railway station wanting to get on a train. And you know, from the migrants' perspective, uh, if you've paid thousands of euros to smugglers to get you through the sea, from Turkey to Greece, and then you go through the Balkans and make it to Hungary, you'll be damned to give up and turn back uh, if the only thing separating you from Western Europe is a two-hour train ride. And so the crowd is building up around Kelati, and people are getting more and more impatient. You know, having to hang out in an underpass with your family, in a tent, surrounded by a bunch of strangers, potentially for months on end, while also being so damn close to your destination, doesn't exactly inspire you to be patient and understanding. So at this point the writing was on the wall. Something was going to happen eventually. The tensions were building without any sort of outlet for them. And what did the Hungarian government do? Nothing! They watched as the crowd grew around the station day by day and did absolutely nothing about it. The basic amenities such as showers, toilets, chargers, etc. were either provided by the city authorities, which are separate from the government, or by non-governmental organizations. So this is where we are right now. Some people actually do manage to get to Western Europe with valid tickets, but others are not so lucky and stumble into a police patrol that sends them back to Kelati. And then, on the 30th of August 2015, the police decided to close down Kelati. Meaning that now, even if you had a valid ticket, you couldn't get to the train unless you also had valid travel documents. And it only took more than a year for the authorities to reach this point. But this closure made a lot of migrants pretty pissed. You know, international train tickets are not cheap, especially if you have to buy them for your whole family. You can easily be looking at one or two hundred dollars per family, which is a pretty substantial amount for refugees. And you cannot get your money back because the ticket office is also inside the station and you are not allowed there, so your money goes to waste. And so the tensions get even higher, but there is no open conflict yet. Because one day later, on the 31st of August, Kerati opened again. And so hundreds of migrants managed to crowd onto the trains and leave Hungary. And these migrants actually all reached Western Europe as far as I know. So naturally, word spread around migrants like wildfire that the authorities are now letting you go to Western Europe if you have a ticket. No police patrols on the trains, no police at the station. If you have a ticket, you can go. And so even more people started crowding around the station, you know, all those stragglers who might be out in the city somewhere. Basically all of them were now in front of Kelati, waiting to leave Hungary. Until the next day, on the 1st of September 2015, without any prior warning, police have again locked down Kelati, causing even more people to lose money on their tickets. And according to reports, the Hungarian Railways was actually selling tickets even the night before. And then, two days later, on the 3rd of September 2015, the line of police have once again disappeared without any prior warning. And so, seeing that, the migrants started running towards the station like insane. Since, you know, now is your chance, you have no idea when the police will be back, but you do want to get out of the country before they return. So thousands of people stream into the station, causing the Hungarian Railway to panic, and completely block all traffic towards Western Hungary and Western Europe. 
So you got thousands of frustrated migrants milling around the station without any information or guidance, just waiting for a train to come. But traffic is shut down, so trains are not coming. Except for one train, which was sent to Kelati by accident from Western Hungary while the tracks were supposed to be closed. You know, that's the organizational skills of the Hungarian railways for you. And the train was drawn by this locomotive with the graphics on its side depicting people running from Hungary to Germany through barbed wire breaking through walls. The illustration itself commemorates the pan-European picnic of 1989 when Hungary led through a bunch of East Germans to West Germany, basically as refugees. Can you see a potential problem with this illustration given the situation at Kelati? So migrants crowded onto the train, and at this point they just wouldn't get off. You know, understandably so after all this back and forth. And so this goes on for multiple hours, the train is not going anywhere, and the railways keep announcing on the PA system that there will be no trains towards Western Europe. And then they start the train towards Western Europe, and they run it all the way from Budapest to Bicke, which is about one fourth of the way towards Vienna. And then they announce that the train is not going to Western Europe, and then police show up and try to pull people off the train. And I must commend the migrants here for showing such civility and restraint here. You know, white Europeans would be smashing shit up at this point. You know, if these people were British tourists, they would already be fist fighting the police or something. So of course, news of people getting pulled off at Bichke made it back to Kelati. And they started protesting. Not smashing things up, not setting things on fire, but protesting. And at this point, every reasonable person should have been in support of them. You know, first they're told they can go, and then they cannot, and then they can, and then they cannot, and then they buy two tickets, both of them get invalidated, and they don't get their money back. And then one train comes in, and then they say it doesn't go, and then it goes, and then it doesn't go after all, and then police show up. I mean, fuck off, you know? So the police try to fix the situation and tell people that, hey, if they get to Bichke, if they go to the refugee camp there, and stay there, they can get food. And the migrants are like, no, fuck you, we just want to leave this country. But by the end of the day, the police kicked the migrants out of the station, and everything was back the way it was before, as in hundreds of people camping around the square, and no one allowed inside the station without travel documents. And if you thought the situation could not get any more absurd, well, you just wait. You see, the migrants at this point were pretty fucking pissed, and they've also realized what Hungarians learn at a very young age. The Hungarian government is not to be trusted. So after some collective organizing, they've decided, fuck it, we're just gonna walk to Austria. That's right, hundreds of people decided they're gonna walk from Budapest to Austria. You know, the authorities keep lying to them, nothing is organized, they're running out of food and water. So they all started going with a one-legged man at the head of the column. From Kelati, through the Grand Boulevard, across the Elizabeth Bridge, through Buda, and then on the M1 highway towards Vienna. And the M1 highway is also one of the main transit arteries of the country. And so this is an absolute disaster, you know, both financially and PR-wise. The situation needs to be immediately corrected, but where is Viktor Orban? Well, it turns out, as this crisis was unfolding, he had other arrangements. Such as watching the Hungary-Romania football match. And guess what kind of people also visit football matches? That's right, football hooligans. Who aren't exactly famous of their tolerance of brown people. And so they showed up to Kelati, where some of the migrants still remained who didn't want to go on foot. And started throwing fireworks into the underpasses, you know, getting into the occasional scuffles. Uh, thankfully the police were there to uphold some kind of semblance of order at least. But at this point the situation was a general clusterfuck. You know, there was a traffic jam on the M1 highway because of the column. Uh, some migrants took to follow the rail tracks, which caused the most congested rail line in the country to shut down for security reasons. 
Football hooligans were at Kelety trying to start shit. And Viktor Orban was still watching his football match. Meanwhile, the migrants were progressing towards Vienna and also stopping by the occasional grocery store to resupply. So this went on until night, when the Hungarian government finally made a decision. Around midnight, they assembled hundreds of buses of the Budapest Transit Authority and whatever other buses they could find, and simply sent them down the highway to pick up the migrants and take them to Austria. Without any checks or controls, mind you. But even this didn't go as well as they planned. You see, the migrants were kind of suspicious of everything the Hungarian government was doing at this point, so they've put some volunteers on the first bus and sent it off and then tracked the bus's position on GPS to see if it's really going where they promised it would go and not to a refugee camp. And only when they saw that the bus did indeed arrive to Austria did everyone else get on the other buses and so they were shipped off. Once again, without any checking of travel documents or visas, etc. If you were at the side of that road and you are brown, the Hungarian government took you to Western Europe for free. Oh, and by the way, as this bus action was going on, police in Budapest were busy battling a mob of 1,000 football hooligans who wanted to make their way to Kelati to, I guess, beat up some migrants. Well, I guess the football match ended. And were throwing shit at police and also set a police car on fire. Yeah, I guess they were passionate about uh, wanting to protect Europe from the hordes of brown people who want to, you know, destroy the country and uh, burn shit down you know, and all that. But at this point, you know, one might say that the Hungarian government could have been justified in shipping people to Austria because it was a chaotic situation, completely out of control. So what other choice do they have to prevent, you know, rioting and stuff? And that would be a correct assessment if the busing of migrants didn't continue for weeks and weeks afterwards. This went on until mid-October, until the wall, huge air quotes, was completely finished. And this is where it was built. Now, do you see a potential problem with this arrangement? So yeah, all Hungary did was divert the flow of migrants to Croatia and Slovenia. And the flow of people would actually not stop until March next year, 2016, when all countries on the Balkan Peninsula closed down their borders, effectively ending the most severe period of the Eastern European migrant crisis. In the meantime, if you were a brown person in Hungary without any travel documents, Orban gave you a free ride to Austria. And the scale really was industrial, mind you. Uh, this Hungarian state news agency article described the situation as follows. Trains carry migrants continuously from Hegyeshalom to Austria. Uh, Hegyeshalom being a northwest Hungarian border city. Every hour, trains full of migrants arrive to the Hegyeshalom train station, the article says. When a train from Keleti rolls into one side of the platform, the migrants board the train standing on the other side, under the guidance of Hungarian police. Between the arrival and departure of trains, no one can leave the platforms. And it wasn't just the trains. From the south of Hungary, from Ruske, they basically collected every single migrant, put them on buses and took them to, once again, Hegyeshalom, where they showed them where the border is and then just left them there. Of course, all the migrants went to Western Europe. And here's some pictures of the empty refugee camp at St. Gotthard, next to the Austrian border. As you can see, it's completely empty. That's because all the migrants at this point were already in Austria. So hundreds of thousands of people made it to Western Europe this way, unchecked, most of them not even registered. And boy, I sure hope that some unsavory characters will not take advantage of this regime. You know, some people with some uh, religious fundamentalist ideas who want to go to Western Europe and, uh, you know, commit some naughty things. And so let's talk about the November 2015 Paris attacks, a series of terrorist attacks committed by ISIS militants that left 130 people dead and hundreds more injured. It consisted of three attacks, namely the Stade de France Stadium suicide bombings, uh, subsequent restaurant shootings and bombings, and of course the Bataclan Theatre massacre. And that alone killed 90 people. And this is Salah Abdeslam, the organizer of these terrorist attacks. Uh, he provided logistics support to the terrorists, and he also recruited them, including in front of Kelati railway station in Budapest, where he recruited two people and then took them to Western Europe by car. And those two actually went on and took part in the Paris terrorist attacks. And I want you to take a look at this picture, you know, what do we see here? Well, on the right, it's the Hungarian government's uh, latest uh, billboard at the time, which was just a picture of the migrants walking through a field and a huge stop sign next to it. And behind it is the hotel where Salah Abdeslam actually lived, while he was recruiting at Kelati and also bought 200,000 SIM cards under a homeless person's name. Do you know how we know this? After the Paris attacks, the Belgian Secret Service noticed that many of the terrorists have Hungarian SIM cards. And then the Belgians went ahead and warned the Hungarians that, you know, maybe this should be investigated or something. And this is how they found out that it was Salah Abdeslam. 
after the terrorist attacks. And Salah Abdeslam didn't just stop there. In January 2016, he actually came to Hungary to negotiate with a Hungarian far-right militia called Nemzeti Artsvonal, led by some gun nut crazy called István Györkös, who, by the way, killed a police officer when the police tried to raid his home looking for weapons. And this is just unbelievable. It's just beyond absurd. Uh, speaking of which, let's read the Hungarian government spokesperson's tweet again, in light of all this new information. No, PM Orban did not let illegal immigrants into Europe. In fact, Hungary was one of the few EU member states that stood up against illegal migration. Aha. Uh -huh. In reality, it was absolutely in Orban's best interest to have as many unchecked migrants in Western Europe as possible. Because if they cause social unrest or terrorist attacks, that will lead to an increase in far-right support. And the more far-right politicians there are in power, the more political wiggle room will Orban have. Who, by the way, is also a far-righter, if you haven't noticed. And his political aspirations only cost more than a hundred people dead and hundreds more injured. And at the end of it all, he gets to stand up and say that he was the one who protected Europe. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments below.